What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 13.5 beta 4 exactly one week after the release of beta 3. So it looks like Apple has indeed shifted over to a weekly release cycle instead of a two week cycle. And if you have not watched my beta 3 video, I would highly recommend watching that before this video because it explains exactly why Apple renamed iOS 13.4.5 to iOS 13.5. And I also give you guys a demo and a detailed explanation of the new COVID-19 features included in this update. But anyways, this video is all about beta four. So we're gonna be talking about what's new in this update, the performance, the battery life, the bugs, and more. And as far as public beta testers, you guys should receive an update today as well. So check your software update section in your settings. So first off, you can see the size of this update is pretty small. Once again, 169.7 megabytes on my iPhone 11 here which did come from beta 3. As far as the build number, if we go into our settings here and go to general about, you can see the build number here is 17F5065A. So we do have an A at the end of the build number there, which does indicate we're getting pretty close to a final release. And we'll talk more about that final release later on in this video. And if we scroll down a little bit more, you can see once again, the modem firmware has not been updated. So really no changes at all coming to the modem firmware. So if you're having cell connectivity issues, you may want to just wait until maybe even iOS 14 beta at this point. All right, so now what's changed in iOS 13.5 beta 4? So if we go into our settings and then go down to privacy and then go to health, this is where we find the COVID-19 exposure logging. So you can see there, it has actually been changed in this new update. And just for comparison, I have beta three on the left and beta four on the right. So you can see there, it used to be called COVID-19 exposure notifications, but now of course it's called COVID-19 exposure logging. And you can see right there, the first thing you'll notice is that it's actually grayed out by default. Whereas in beta three, it was actually turned on by default and you would have to turn it off. But just because it was turned on did not mean that it was actually tracking anything or anything like that. You still had to have applications installed before it actually did anything at all. But now in beta four, it doesn't even turn on unless you have an authorized application installed. So it's completely grayed out unless you have one of those applications installed. And then down here at the bottom, you can see we have delete exposure log. So there's also the option to delete the log and you can see there's a big explanation here as well, much more than we had in the previous beta. It was just two paragraphs here, which was really confusing to a lot of people. But now in beta four, we have a much needed better explanation of this feature. So it says you cannot turn on exposure logging without an authorized app installed that can send exposure notifications. When enabled, iPhone can exchange random IDs with other devices using Bluetooth. The random IDs your device collects are stored in an exposure log for 14 days. This exposure log allows an app to authorize to notify you if you may have been exposed to COVID-19. If you are diagnosed with COVID-19, you could choose to share your own device's random IDs with the authorized app so that it can notify others anonymously. And then once again, we have the option to delete exposure log. And when you tap on that, you can see there, it gives you the option to reset your diagnosis keys. So once again, that updated explanation and the fact that it's now opt in and not already enabled was much needed since most most people were very confused by this in the last beta and actually I think I did maybe a bad job of explaining this because a lot of people were starting to worry about their privacy. So I got a lot of comments like this where people were talking about you know being tracked by Apple and Google and how it's like an inside job and the government's going to track us and things like that and like I said I guess it's my fault for not explaining the specifics of this feature well enough. It was kind of unknown at the time but that's not at all what this feature is doing. So Oliver Hunt is somebody on Twitter who worked through the privacy preserving contact tracing spec and shared some very in-depth details on how the COVID-19 contact tracing actually works in regards to being tracked. So you can see here, he says the term contact specifically means person you may have come in contact with not friends slash people in your address book. So when this feature was first announced, a lot of people thought that it was just going to have access to like all your contacts, your location, you know, every step you made and things like that, which is absolutely not even close to what's going on here. And Oliver Hunt here has a whole thread on how this feature works and how it does not track you at all. So there's really no need at all to worry about your privacy with this feature. And if you want to read the specifics, I will link that thread on Twitter down in the description below. Now, I did also wanna mention that some people are getting this not available in your country on the COVID-19 exposure logging section, even though they're in the United States. So I'm not sure if this is only available in certain states 
uh, but it's definitely only available in certain countries. But I'm not sure what's going on since it appears to not be available in every state, at least at the time of recording this video. Now, we also get a nice new feature for group FaceTime calls in iOS 13.5. So if we go into our settings and go to FaceTime, you can see we have a new feature there called automatic prominence. And it shows for speaking during group FaceTime calls, the tile of the person speaking will automatically become larger. So this was on by default in all prior versions of iOS 13, but now you can actually disable this if you don't want you know, the zooming in of your face when you talk in a group FaceTime call. So I personally did not mind this, but I know a lot of people did mind this and they didn't like having their face real big on the screen when they're talking. So now you have the option to disable that, which is nice. Also new in iOS 13.5 is an option to share your medical ID info during emergency SOS call. So if we go into our settings and go to health and then go to medical ID, you need to go ahead and create a medical ID if you have not done so already. And then down at the bottom, you'll see this new feature right here. It says emergency access show when locked and then also share during emergency call. So it says your medical ID will not be shared if you call emergency services. But if you turn that on, it says that it will be shared when you call emergency services. So even if your phone is locked, the first responders will be able to see your information straight from the lock screen. And just for comparison, we have the same section and settings on iOS 13.4.1 here on the left. And you can see we do not have any option to share our information during an emergency call. Only up at the top, we have the option for showing when locked. So that is definitely a nice new addition and I would highly recommend everybody on 13.5 turn this on. It's also worth noting that this feature will only work if you go into your settings, privacy, location services, system services, and emergency calls and SOS. You wanna make sure that that is enabled for this to work properly. So some pretty nice changes coming here in iOS 13.5 with a real focus on your health. Now, as far as bugs in iOS 13.5, the mail bugs seem to still be persisting even in this new beta. So the badge sometimes will show new emails, like you'll maybe say four emails or five emails. Then I go into the mail application and it doesn't show me anything new. I have to refresh and then the emails show up. So that's an annoying bug that's been going on for a while. Some people also reported duplicate messages coming back. I have not had that, but some people are saying that it has come back. And at this point, like I've said many times in the past, I would not expect a fix for the mail application until iOS 14. So if you're still having bugs with mail and it's kind of unbearable for you, I would just go ahead and move on to a third party mail application until Apple fixes this, which once again, will probably be in iOS 14. Now, some people have also reported some Instagram bugs in iOS 13.5. Some people are saying that on their home screen right here, it just turns completely black and they can't see their stories or any posts or anything like that. And they have to quit out the application and open it back up. So I did also notice that there's a bug with stories. If you go to your stories and you add a song, so I'm just gonna add a random song right here. And when you add the song and you go out of the application, that audio continues continues to play in the background with no option to pause. There's nothing in the control center, anything that audio continues to play. The only way to stop this from happening is to actually press the stop button right here in your Instagram story on the music section and then go out of the application, which is kind of annoying, but that is a bug that should be fixed pretty soon. But aside from those minor bugs, I really haven't had any complaints with iOS 13.5 so far. As far as the performance goes, we did do a little Geekbench test before this video, and I did score a little bit higher in both single core and multi-core than the previous beta. But as far as using the device normally throughout the day, you know, doing social media applications and gaming and things like that, I really didn't feel much of a difference at all from the previous beta or iOS 13.4.1. So I would not expect a major change, but it looks like according to Geekbench, we do have a minor bump in performance here with this beta update. But as far as battery life goes, battery life was a different story. So battery life was noticeably a little bit worse on the previous beta, it's a little bit too early for this beta, but in beta three, it was a little bit worse than any previous beta, and of course, worse than iOS 13.4.1, the latest public release. So given that this is a beta, that's kind of expected, but I just wanna let you guys know in case you were thinking about updating. So now, should you update to iOS 13.5 beta four? And I say that at this point, I would just wait for the final release. I mean, we're one, maybe two weeks away from seeing iOS 13.5 released to the public. So since we have an A, 
at the end of the build number, we could see the final release of iOS 13.5 as early as next Wednesday on the 13th. But I'm thinking that there might be another beta since this COVID-19 tracing is such an important thing to get right the first time and Apple's not going to want to push another update to fix something, you know, that wasn't done right. So if we don't get the final on the 13th, we will see it on the 20th. So I'm thinking that we may actually see another beta next week on the 13th and then the final release of iOS 13.5 on the week of the 18th, most likely on the 20th. And then Apple's gonna be saving iOS 13.4.2, 13.4.3 and so on for security updates and you know other bugs throughout the next few months. And of course we will see iOS 14 beta one on June 22nd. Now in related news, Apple pushed out an update for the AirPods Pro to try to fix some of the issues that people have been reporting on. So the firmware version is 2D15. And as you know, these updates happen automatically when charging. If you go into your settings right here, go to Bluetooth, make sure they are connected and then go to your settings, general about, and then you will see your AirPods Pro right there. Tap on that and you will see the firmware version. You can see mine is up to date 2D15. And a lot of people were hoping that this issue would fix the noise cancellation bug but a lot of people are actually reporting that this doesn't fix the noise cancellation bug and that it's actually made it worse. So that's crazy because I have not had this issue at all. I don't know anybody in real life who has had this issue. I've seen a few people comment on my videos having this issue, but it does not seem to be very widespread. It does seem to be affecting some people, but for some reason, this firmware version apparently has not fixed it for everybody. Apple did, however, post new support pages for if noise cancellation isn't working as expected and if your AirPods Pro make crackling or static sounds. So I guess that's good for people experiencing issues like that. And Apple you know, offers ways to possibly fix that. But I just wanted to mention that because I know a lot of you guys have AirPods Pro and some of you guys have also reported having issues with them lately. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for iOS 13.5 beta 4. Let me know what you guys think about this update and the COVID-19 tracing. What are your thoughts on everything? Let me know down in a comment below. And of course, if you guys enjoyed this video or just listening to my voice, I would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. Also, make sure you guys subscribe so you could see when the final version of iOS 13.5 gets released and what comes next. And of course, stay tuned for iOS 14 beta coverage, which will be crazy. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.